Bugs, it's Deborah here from Body Garbage, and today I'll be participating in a soap challenge with Renee from Soaps for Love. Neither one of us has used corn silk or chocolate into our soaps, so this is a challenge that we designed for just the two of us. So behind me, I have chocolate melting that I'm going to incorporate into my batter, and today we'll be starting our cereal series, so this soap will be Cocoa Puffs. So if you like to see how I make it, tag along with me and let's get uh, so soaping. So it's time for us to get started on our Cocoa Puff cereal soap. I still have my chocolate in the back, uh, melting double boiler style. It's actually in a container in a pot with very hot water that already came to a rolling boil. So I'm going to let it do its thing. While we add our lye solution, which is sodium lactate, sodium hydroxide, distilled water, goat's milk, and our corn silk. Oh, I need one thing, and that will be my strainer. So that way I don't get any drops of the corn silk inside of the silk. Our... Oils are room temperature, and our lye is a bit warm. Um, this is master batch, so I heated up the milk before I added it into my solution. Um, but that's fine. So we're just going to add this in here. The corn silk didn't dissolve all the way, but that's fine. First time making it. So I'm going to take this to the sink right away. Inside of our batter, we have some KLA and Bent Night Clays, as per usual. And we're going to stick blend this up all together. I don't know about you guys, but I loved cereal as a child. And Cocoa Puffs was one of my favorite. Now that I'm an adult, I'm kind of more partial to um, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. But I've always loved them. I loved all cereals, like Pops, Cake, um, or Kicks, rather. Corn Chex was kind of my thing. And Shredded Wheat, if you can believe it. I like the plain one, the regular coated one with the sugar, or the one with um, the strawberry flavoring. It didn't matter to me. I just love shredded meat. I just really want to get this emulsified and we're going to pour some of this batter into the chocolate. Mix it up. We're going to pour some more off for our white, which will not be scented because our fragrance, which is a type of um, cocoa puffs, or cocoa puffs type rather. It has a high amount of vanillin in it or vanilla. And I don't want that portion of the soap to discolor. So we're going to pour the majority of it in our base batter. And this is going to be semi-natural. Um, we're using oxide, brown oxide and titanium dioxide for our colorants. <laughs> Right now, I'm going to add in our simple syrup solution, and this is sugar, just regular table sugar, with um, aloe vera juice. Okay, so... I'm going to pour off our white into this bucket. And 
And we're going to set this to the side just for the time being. And we're going to work with this portion. So we have our chocolate here. It's not fully melted. Well, it's melted, but it's kind of thick. So we'll see how it goes. It's about maybe a quarter cup, probably a little bit less. So we're going to pour some of the batter in here. And that actually was the hot lye is what did it. And I think I got a little splash back. Boobs in my way, can't see. And we're just going to keep tempering this. And tempering is something that bakers use as well. It's just something to help incorporate anything that is going like eggs. If you're making ice cream, when you're before you pour the entire egg mixture into your uh, cream mix, cream and sugar mix, you temper it so that way the eggs won't cook. So this way, our chocolate. You know, whatever it's going to do, it won't do to our batter. Um, like I said, I've never worked with chocolate before, so this is my first time. And I'm just going to pour a little bit more in. Just want to make sure that I'm bringing it to the temperature of the soap batter. I've seen a few people incorporate soap um, chocolate into their soap, but they didn't really mix it in the batter. They actually put it... Um, you know, like chocolate chunks into it. So this is what we're doing. And that's all tempered in. Hopefully it doesn't like do anything strange and solidify. And this is milk chocolate, by the way. If you want to do something like this, you can use any type of chocolate you like. This is what I actually had on hand at home. So this is what I chose to use. And I need my fragrance, obviously. And I got these, I bought a whole bunch from Indigo Fragrances. And these smell amazing. Sorry guys, I don't know why I'm so unorganized today, but I'm getting it together. Here we go, Cocoa Puffs. So, I'm going to set that to the side. I may not use all of it, but we're going to add in our oxide. just want to make sure that it's still fluid. We're going to add in our oxide, but half a tablespoon. See what color that gets us. A uh, tablespoon. And this is from Wholesale Supplies Plus or Crafter's Choice. And we're going to blend this in. delicious and I didn't even put the fragrance in I'm sorry if I'm yelling at you guys but I love it when a plan comes together okay and we have a light trace there so we are going to Add everything in at one time and blend it up. So, we have our Greek yogurt here. These are our super fats. So, do about two tablespoons, two teaspoons of that. I'm sorry. 
And we have our super fatting oils. I'm just going to pour this in our batter. Make sure we get all of this out. And I always super fat my soaps even when I do hot process um, within my recipe and after the cook or after trace. So I'm going to put this over the yogurt. <laughs> does smell like cake batter you guys we'll clean off our sides want everything to be colored and incorporated which I'm loving. We're going to mix in our fragrance by hand. I'm just going to wipe this off so that way I can get together with my um, make, making my white soap. I have some water over here. Take paper towel and wipe off the outside. Set that to the side. I'm going to take our fragrance and our base and put this to the side for right now. While it's still at a light trace, I'm going to mix up my white. And then we'll add in the fragrance, mix that up, and then we will um, pour it into the mold. And I have some little cocoa puffs that are going on top. And those are made from out of soap dough, which is nothing but leftover batter from previous soaps that I've made. I didn't let them um, cure or anything like that. I wrapped them up in a baggie and let them stay that way. Shake off the excess water. And we're just going to blend this in. Back in the water this goes. And we'll just let that set to the side. I'm going to mix this in a little bit more by hand just to make sure everything is fully incorporated. And I want to give this another quick good buzz with the stick blender. And now we're going to mix in our fragrance oil. This is starting to thicken a little bit because of the milk and the oxide. And we're going to pour all of this in here. And it smells delightful. It smells just like chocolate cereal. Mix this in by hand. 
and make sure that all the oxide is incorporated. If I can stop splashing soap in myself. It's like notes of almond and chocolate. It smells just like a milk chocolate bar. It's oh so good. It's yummy. And while this is still fluid, let's pour it. Yay! Okay, that should be good. So we are going to take our mold that I have over here. And hopefully, maybe we can make up a little drop swirl. So we're going to pour this in about that much. Give it a little shimmy, shimmy, shimmy for any air bubbles. And we're going to take our white that's unscented un and come up top. More of our brown. Get a good scrape on this. Say good scrape, I mean a good scrape. Concentrate. Scrape. Okay. Last a little bit off. We'll wipe this out later. Set it to the side. Give the soap another shimmy, shimmy, shake, shake. And we're going to go in with our white again. Just layer that on the top. I didn't want this to be super designed. I just wanted it to be simple. And that's how all the cereal soaps will be in the series. Very simple. Okay. I'm going to wipe that out. And then... Another little shimmy, shimmy, shake, shake, tap, tap, boom, boom. Okay, so for the top of the soap, like I said, simple, simplicity does it. We have these little cereal embeds that I told you guys I made out of soap dough. I do, however, need my swizzle tizzle stick. So we're just going to come in here with a little... Swizzle tizzle on the top, and this is not, as you can see, going to be piped or anything like that. Simplicity does it for these soaps, and this is no definite design. I just want it to look cute underneath the cereal embeds. And I'll stop in a minute, guys. This is kind of like mesmerizing me. So I'm just, don't pay me any mind. Okay. And we'll take one of our napkins. And this soap is still very fluid. Even though it has milk in it. So maybe it's the fragrance. And in no ordered fashion, we're just going to drop these in. Drop this into the chocolatey milk. 
because that's what we love when we eat Cocoa Puffs. Our Cocoa Puffs turn our milk a very nice chocolate flavor and brown color. get some in down here and some of these obviously are going to be cut when we cut the soap but that's fine and we have one more we'll squeeze it in right here okay so there you have it folks cocoa puffs cereal type soap and i will see you guys back here in 24 maybe 48 maybe 18 to 24 hours who knows to cut this soap but i'm going to gel this um as i do all of my cold process soaps um oh actually i can't it has milk in it or can i i gel them anyway even though people say you shouldn't because it has milk but i put sugar in my soaps anyway eh. Whatever, I'll decide. But this is how it's looking on the top. So we'll see what the cut is like when we come back to cut it. I'm going to gel this soap. I'll let you know how it goes. Thank you guys for watching. See you for the cut.